good evening i thank ram madhav ji and also respected gopal arya ji is with us riya jikbal ji and all the dignitaries assembled here uh, today uh, i am really happy to share some of my experiences my thoughts especially in such a wonderful topic what is the role of civil society in coming years in this meta era as an engineer and also running an organization for 25 years i really uh, uh, would like really passionate to share some of my experiences and also uh, want to see how the whole society will change or look up to uh, especially when it comes to civil society as we all know the three important pillars uh, governance the business and the civil society and for the civil society it is sarve janaha sukhino bhavantu it's a antyodaya reaching the unreached the antyodaya concept of dindayal upadhyay ji the founder of janasang and it is for the people by the people uh, that has been the concept and especially in india for such a big population uh, lot of organizations lot of religious organizations non government organizations are putting their uh, efforts to do their best and when it comes to what do we see after 25 years uh, especially for me uh, we started our organization adamya chetana uh, 25 years back exactly in 1997 and uh, mainly our uh, uh, our organization is working with uh, school children especially the government school children where the free education is given and uh, when we started our organization the first thing especially as an engineer probably first thing what i did is visited around 100 schools our team those volunteers who really wanted to do something visited some around 100 schools uh, saw what is the requirement what is the problem what we can how we can address some of them and the journey has been uh, we organized few computer classes for these children this is way back in 97 and then computers came to their now every school has a computer lab then we actually initial days we were carrying a computer uh, we converted all their uh, textbook poems into we gave nice music converted them into digital form played them in the, played them in the classrooms and it was the whole learning experience teacher used to say the poem to by heart that particular poem they used to take months together they could learn in one hour and then later that is the program we called it as ata patha play and learn and then it graduated to uta and i'll come back to that thing again so uh, then we saw in the covid time especially when the uh, the whole uh, whole of the country whole world went for online education i was really wondering what will happen to these children where we are working with government school children what will happen to them and uh, i was always under the impression that they are going to lag behind because probably they may, all of them have no access to uh, phones no access to uh, online teaching but i was so happy to see just two days back the sslc results in karnataka came and this time the result was excellent and one of the best performers the best of the best performance and the ratio increased and the the children from government schools are the toppers and they have done fantastically well compared to earlier years it is something phenomenal and based on that when uh, i was asked to talk i just visualized myself uh, especially after 25 years how will be our uh, school education i can just what i am imagining i am visualizing is a girl from a village near kalburgi or a boy from uh, mandya from bangalore or maybe delhi and no need of this traffic jams no need of traveling in buses but still they can with the uh, uh, meta era with virtual reality they can still play together uh, chat together make fun and learn it should be the possibility no no longer those big bags no traffic jams no traveling for hours together in buses at the same time not just the infrastructure uh, at the same time use artificial intelligence use uh, the various blockchain technology or whatever and make sure that every child based on his 
uh, environment, his parents, and his particular uh, nature, technique, can we able to give him the right education? Can we pinpoint, give a specific education to every child so that he can really flourish instead of teaching every, the same thing to every, every child? That should be the vision and that should be the target of civil society to visualize uh, the best of uh, and what every human resource we can reach to. And the same way, I am also a trustee of Anant Kumar uh, Foundation, uh, Anant Kumar Pratishthan. And recently, we organized a program for uh, uh, women Gram Panchayat uh, uh, leaders, women, uh, elected women members of Gram Panchayat. And uh, we did a program for 30 women, and it was a great learning experience how to uh, enable them to govern better, not just become robots or not become not to give the uh, remote to their husbands or uh, men. That was the whole intent. And uh, then I realized there are 50,000 women, elected women members in Karnataka alone. And how do we reach them? I think probably this uh, virtual reality classrooms, and not just the classrooms. I'm not just talking about the uh, physical infrastructure or the classroom, and also can we look at the specific problems of their village, the history of their village, their uh, mentality, their approach, and uh, create projects, train them, enable them. And uh, I'm sure I am looking so many, I'm really excited that this particular, uh, uh, the technology, the way we are growing, the way especially the Indian government is supporting all these things, really it's going to be wonders. Especially for me, when we, uh, when we started, when we took a decision, a bold decision of uh, cooking for thousands of children, my first day of cooking in 2003 was uh, 10,000 children. And from there, the journey started from 10,000 children on day one, end of fourth year, we had four kitchens in India. And uh, uh, since last 19 years, uh, every day we cook for 1,70,000 children and reach it out to these schools. A person who was, who I also learned cooking after my marriage, my mother-in-law taught me how to cook for some two, three people. And how did I jump into this project is because probably the technology, my, whatever I learned as a uh, scientist in aeronautical development agency, uh, working with uh, high where there is a high requirement, high reliability factor, tracking the defect, closing the defects, all these things came handy to me and we used all this. So we are able to cook quality food at a lower cost and reach out to children. And it is possible because of the technology, because of the uh, processes. Uh, but at the, so there is, a, as a civil society, as an NGO, in fact, way back in 98, we started a portal called raktadan.org, wherein we could connect all the blood donors and the patients, and within a few hours, you can uh, reach out to a couple of uh, blood donors. Otherwise, finding for donors was a big task earlier. And now there is no need of those portals because technology is changing. Every uh, blood bank has all those uh, database and portals. Uh, coming to the second point, one is the Sarve Janaha Sukhino Bhavantu. And second point, what I would like to say is uh, when the technology comes, we are like uh, Honorable uh, uh, Gopal Aryaji was mentioning, there is a black side of it. The other side is the change in uh, our lifestyle the pollution, water pollution. In fact, I keep seeing it every place. It's the, based on a report of IIT Mumbai. Every brand of salt, what we are eating, has microplastic in it. It is the report of IIT Mumbai. What does it mean? Uh, we, should we just stop talking about it, publicizing about it? Now we should look at the technology as in civil society, civil society activism should be one is there should be a technology which can clean all the ocean. And also, we should look at greener and cleaner technologies. That is going to be the future, uh, future technology. It, it, unless it is green and clean, let's not call it as a technology. It is not. So that should be the focus. In fact, as, a, uh, as an NGO, Adame Chetana tried looking at 
just not just stop at cooking and sending food to children. Let's, can we uh, use waste as a fuel? Can we use, uh, instead of using fossil fuel for cooking, the entire world is dependent on fossil fuels for cooking. Adam Chaitana tried not using fossil fuel, but using waste material as the fuel. Since last 12 years, my, uh, the entire fuel, what we use to cook thousands of children comes from the waste that is generated by the people. We use briquettes, we use biogas. We have 100% stopped the usage of LPG or diesel. In the same way, concept of zero garbage cooking, concept of zero garbage dining, we have a small idea of, we have a huge uh, set of cutleries, around 8,000 sets of cutleries, reusable cutleries, where any organization, any events, any seminar, they can take the cutleries, use it, and return it back. Uh, make the dining also a zero garbage uh, experience. And uh, such small, small projects, including, uh, in, fact, uh, in fact, the technology and social media helped me in promoting it is when you open the milk packet in the morning, uh, the just small message which I said every day in Bangalore, we open around 50 lakh milk packets per day. Instead of cutting the corner, instead of separating the piece, make sure that you don't separate the piece so that the that 50 lakh small pieces, as we all know, cannot be segregated. As they cannot be segregated, they cannot be recycled. Instead, just change it such that you don't separate the piece. Change the process, change the method. Start thinking about uh, those lives who, uh, uh, because of that small plastic, can affect the birds, affect the ocean. So these are all the uh, ideas, thoughts that make people come closer, think about environment, think about alternate technologies. And uh, uh, that is the second part. I think let's not visualize the technology or our uh, virtual reality should be. Let there not be, I uh, just don't dare to visualize that our children after 20 years, after 10 years carrying oxygen, oxygen bottles, Elders more than eating food, maybe eating more medicines than the food, and the people of our age uh, sitting helpless. Let's not that be the, let's as a civil society members, as NGOs, let's, we have to make sure that the onus is on us, the responsibility is on us, that let the technology is not just for the business, let the technology not just for the governance, but let the technology, let the virtual reality is for the betterment of the society. And uh, as a last uh, part, the virtual reality, really in last 20, 25 years, what we have seen is not only the people are coming closer, not only the geographical barriers are uh, reducing, now we are trying to understand how the animal life is, how the plant life is. Probably the, uh, these remote sensors, the hidden cameras in the forest, are teaching us many lessons. Our animal, our wildlife is teaching us how to live. How to live harmoniously is the lesson from all these creatures, ants, bees, the tigers, elephants. Probably now it is the time we look at them. And uh, it is as human beings, we have to learn how we can live in a harmonious uh, harmonious manner. The concept of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, which our ancestors have been talking, I think this is the high time we uh, look at that. Uh, in fact, I was asked to talk about the, what is the role of NGOs in the uh, pervasive governance, when the governance is becoming so and so tight and rigid. It is good, it has to be. But ultimately, it has to be less governance, no governance one day. And when we say it is a family, uh, then it is uh, no business as well, no money transaction. Can we ultimately, as a civil society, look at the real meaning of Vasudeva Kutumbakam and live like a family, make use of uh, metaverse, the virtual reality, as the tool uh, to lead a, a life of the real human value system? Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.